Alright folks, welcome back to Let's Play Romance of Three Kingdoms. I'm Mysterious JG. I haven't really been able to figure out exactly why I can't get tutorials to work. Um, because I did not seem to be able to get them to work in that game. Even though I had tutorials set to yes. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you a couple of basic tutorials. I'm going to play in another scenario. The Battle for Supremacy came down to two men, Yuan Shao, who toppled Gong Zhong Zan to take Mei Bei, and Cao Cao, who captured the Emperor and secured the Central Plains. If you were to Yuan Shao in both territory and resources, Cao Cao had only his wits and his men to rely on as the two forces headed for their final showdown. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just play just from wandering around to get you f to see some facilities and stuff. I'm going to play around uh, with one of the possibilities that I almost went with, which is playing as Cao P in the two two powers collide at Guandu scenario. And the tutorials are set to no. Let's put that back on yes. I don't know why it's default, but I'm not going to mess with anything else. I'll just see what happens here. Something seems to have messed up the tutorials. Ever since the tyrant Dong Zhuo seized power, regional lords outside the capital had been desperately fighting each other for survival. In Hebei, the former anti Dong Zhuo coalition leader Yuan Shao defeated Gong Zhong Zan to build the largest force amongst all the feudal lords. Sorry, Cao Cao was in the central plains. He had captured Emperor Xian and defeated the Dong Zhuo loyalists Lu Bu and Yuan Shu making him strong enough to stand up to Yuan Shao. Tensions between these two powerful men could lead to war at any moment. The victory of such a conflict would surely control the future of China. Meanwhile, Sun Tzu had taken control of much of the southeast, earning himself the title The Little Conqueror of the East. And as we can see, he has the Kiao sisters working for him, <laughs> along with Shang Zhang. They've actually both come to work for him, as opposed to, you know, the Kiao sisters kind of wandering off and disappearing and refusing to serve. In contrast, time is progressing peacefully for Liu Biao of Jing and Liu Zhang of Yi. It was the first month of 200, and a new chapter of history was about to begin. Ah, tutorials, for some reason, are here and not in the other one. Hello, friend. I don't think I've seen you around here before. Is this the first time you visited this place? Yes, this is my first time. Yes, you disgusting peasant. This is my first time. You're probably not used to talking to people yet. Let me tell you, tell you a little hint I like to use. Some people are born to listen to. Yes, if you want to ignore them, hold down the square button to speed through the message. Oh, it's really tempting to do that right now just for a laugh, but the whole point of this video is for us to go through some of the tutorials and I'm not going to be able to show you because of whatever the heck happened with this uh, show you game. Windows. Of course, they'll go by too fast to read. I doubt even your young eyes will be able to keep up. I don't know, I have incredibly powerful, noble eyes, you filthy peasant. Hmm, that could pose a problem. I wouldn't want to miss something important by accident. But there's the beauty of it. Even if you miss something, you can review what was said by pressing the L3 button. Oh, I was gonna do it, but skip past, but no. The L3 button, eh? Thank you, old man. That's some very useful information. Go to bed, old man. If you wish, I could offer you some advice on how to walk around the city. Yes. Tell me what you know. Visit facilities within the city. Choose one of the following command headings government, military, civilian. If the facility's image has a symbol representing a person attached to it, that means there are, more than, there are one or more people in the facility. There are currently. There are three types of symbol. Uh, one of the left represents a person targeted by either you or your, cur your current orders or requests. The center symbol represents either your spouse or those with whom you've sworn an oath. All of the types of people are represented by the symbol on the right. Special facilities are also added to cities as they grow large in scale. The home facility is only available in your home city. You can also view a city's simplified information from a person L1 or R1. If you want more detailed information about the city, select through the city information option accessible with this square, circle, whatever shape that is. JG doesn't know what shapes are abundant. The weight command makes time pass more quickly, and if you want to exit a city, just press the triangle button. Let's see, you have the thanks of Tsao P, you disgusting and terrible and ignorant peasant. You are Lord Tsao P, please allow me to offer my advice, one servant to another. I'm not a servant, what the fuck? 
<laughs> you will receive orders from the city's ruler, either the sovereign, vice royal, or prefect at the council in the castle. Completing orders raises your deeds. When your deeds are high enough, your class will too. When your deeds raise high, rise high enough, your class will too, allowing you to lend, lead more units and receive a higher stipend. If you have the time and gold, you should execute some domestic tasks on your own as well. The people will thank you and your fame will rise. One last thing, I will leave in the city briefly to observe the land outside. Sure, let's leave the city. I can't stay another night in the city. Uh -huh. Alright, I will do that. Whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to let you take over my life, old man. You obviously know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I too shall continue my stroll. Farewell. Oh, and this is random... So he tells you to leave the city, but then he's not going to help you. Now it's like random traveler, dude. This is your first time leaving the city, isn't it? May I offer some guidance? Sure. I would be grateful for your help. Let's begin with how to move. To select a destination on the land, directly press the triangle button. The castle command menu. Sorry, folks. Church will appear. Place it where you would like to go and hit the X button. If destination is a city, when you arrive, you can select whether or not you would like to enter. If you would like to talk to another officer traveling on the map, put the cursor on that officer and press the X button. If the officer is far away, you will head in that direction. When a city and character are in the same place, a list from which you can select your exact destination appears. If you want to see beyond the edge of the screen, you can scroll freely with the right analog stick. You can then return to the screen to your own position. <laughs> that makes sense. It doesn't make that much sense now as I'm doing this, that I went to the trouble of finding these tutorials, because they're all rather boring. And, uh, I, I'd forgotten that they give you, like, a button-by-button -button press detail that you probably don't need since you're not playing the game. Next, I'll tell you about the clan. Select the city, base, or troop to choose a specific destination from the map or from a list. A shortcut allows you to register cities that you visit often. Select Edit under Shortcut to register up to five different cities. See, I never used that, but it actually would be pretty useful. Because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of cities on the map. You can spend a lot of time trying to figure out where you're supposed to be going. If you select recent, recent you can access a list of the five cities you've been to most recently. Those are useful hits. Do a shortcut for here you are for visit or recent for cities I've been to lately. I like to visit Gen G's for jump. Sorry. <clears throat> Use wait to stand still while time passes more quickly. If you want to cancel a move or a waiting period, press the X triangle something button. Press the action button right here. If the speed setting has not been set to fastest, you can speed up movement and waiting periods by holding down the X button. Okay, that's everything I know. I'm most grateful. I now know everything you know, and it took about two minutes. <laughs> You're welcome. Goodbye. So let's return to the city. Uh -huh. Actually, you know what? Let's not return to the city. Let's show off dueling and debating. I might not be able to show off debating. But there's definitely a dueling tutorial. I think if I go to one, I'm just currently held by a hostile force. I should be able to Hold it! You can go through, but your gold stays here! Select your response. You can persuade. Oh, I do have the persuade command. Alright. So let's... Apparently I have the hero skill. Or I'm famous enough to use persuade. So let's persuade. Calm down. I have something to tell you about how stupid and disgusting you are. Will you view this debate? Yes. And now Cyan shows up to give us the debate tutorial. Shall I teach you how to hold the debate? Sure. Yes, tell me what you know, and then explain why you never appeared in Waste Muso mode when you're supposed to be a Way character in Dynasty Warriors 7. I'm facing Geechee? Hey, Telpi's actually got pretty decent stats. Intelligence of 88 and Charisma of 84. So are you truly ready? This is your last chance to back out. Uh, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> I will now begin your instruction in the art of debating. If you wish to cancel at any time, press the start button. In a debate, you can use commands each turn to move the intellect meter. You must push the meter all the way towards your opponent's group to secure victory. First, I would like to teach you about the rule of commands. The number of commands possessed is determined by the int of each character. The higher your int, the more commands you can choose from. The types of commands you have depends on your skills. If 
you have the, requ the requisite skills, more powerful commands will be at your disposal. Those are the basic factors involved in winning a debate. Charisma enters into it somehow. Or maybe that's only in Romance uh, 11. Next, I would like to try... I would like you to try selecting a command. As this is just a training session, you will both have four commands to use. Please select any one of the commands. You can explain the logic behind your argument. You can appeal to your opponent's desire for profit. You can appeal to your opponent's sense of virtue. Or you can appeal to your opponent's desire for profit. Profit 4. You have selected a number 4 profit command. Basic commands include logic, profit, and virtue, all have the effect of pushing the intellect meter towards the opponent. When you have your command, when you select your command, your opponent also selects at the same time. It seems Lord Yiji has selected a number 1 profit command. If we compare your command with Lord Yiji's command, yours has the higher number. So your command is judged to be superior. I must admit the truth of at least some of your words. And the intellect meter moves towards your opponent. In the event that both of you select a command with the same number, it draws a clear to me the command has any effect. Now, what else happens after one basic command defeats another? Commands that include a number, like basic commands, appear on the screen. On the screen. At the end of the turn. Sorry. Appear on the... If you don't know what that's from, you're, you're not watching my uh, horribly unwatched SNES RPGs. Appear on the corresponding number on the board of the sections, screen's bottom right at the end of the turn. Basically, there's a little checker chessboard down there with just nine hexes, and uh, if you play a seven, a profit seven command, that the seven will be marked with a blue. And if he plays profit one, the one will be marked with blue. And uh, that will make a difference that they will explain shortly. The order in which the commands appear is as follows. The spirit command appears on the board first. And the feet of command appears after that. That actually can make a difference sometimes. If there was a draw and either command appears on the board. Of course, there's a reason for which commands are placed on the board like this. Let well, me explain next the effects that the board has on the debate. Please select on the command. At the start of each turn, you can, your commands are replenished up to a maximum that you can possess. Governance is advanced through desire. I must admit there's at least truth to some of your words. It seems several profit commands have formed a line. When the commands of the same type form a line like this, either logic, profit, or virtue, it means your argument is consistent and the intellect meter moves even further towards your opponent. This time Lord UG made the line, so the intellect meter moved towards you. The command that formed a line then disappeared from the board. The most important point to note is the following. When a line forms in this manner, the strength of the board reverses. When the board strength was set with the arrow pointing up, 9 was the strongest and 1 the weakest. But now the arrow is down, so 1 is strongest and 9 is weakest. You must also be careful not to form a type of line that will cause damage to yourself and move the meter towards you. If logic, profit, and virtue form a line like this, it means your argument is incoherent and the intellect meter moves towards your side your own side. Once again, the commands that formed a line disappear from the board. And once again, the board strength reverses. The board and command numbers are thus vital to winning the debate. The command numbers go from 1 to 9. Choosing them carefully while paying close attention to the board and the direction... Yeah, choose them carefully while paying close attention to the board and the direction of the strength. If the commands are about to form a line, a blue ellipse will appear if the combo will benefit you, whereas a red ellipse appears if it will harm you. This is very, yeah, it's kind of boring, folks, but this is actually kind of important if you're going to play this game. Uh, basically, if you just, like the only time you're ever going to like really screw yourself over is if you're in such a hurry to place a command because you think you're going to win that you ignore the fact that a red ellipse appears. And I've done this. You're just like, ha ha ha, I'm going to, I have a 9, and I've almost won, so if I play this 9, it will finish things off, 
and like it tries to warn you but you don't listen and boom you place a nine which actually like gives your opponent a ton of points and pushes you back and it's kind of sucks for you these symbols show on the board during command selection be very careful whenever you see them appear now I shall explain about auxiliary commands commands such as focus are auxiliary commands Select focus now and press OK. Do it. Unlike basic commands, auxiliary commands such as this do not move the intellect meter. This is because they only have an effect when on the board. So when a basic command moves the intellect meter, focus helps it move more than usual. As long as focus is on the board, the effect continues. And if two or three focuses are on the board, the effect is increased. To cancel the effect of this auxiliary command, override it on the board with a command of the same number. If an opponent's focus is on the board like this, select a command with the same number, and erase the old command by overriding it. Next we shall explain attack commands such as fault. Attack commands do not have a number. Attack commands always defeat basic commands. Now please select fault. I find fault with your request, haha. <laughs> no matter what you do, you cannot deny your fate. Shut the fuck up. No fate but what we make. Oh, I can't believe he said something that cliche. Attack commands have no number, so they do not appear on the board. They defeat basic commands and have an even stronger effect on the intellect meter. There are other attack commands besides fault. Some completely erase an opponent's commands. Others prevent the opponent from acting for several turns. Yeah, basically the um, attack commands, you've got to have the skills to use them. Like they are actually skills your character would have to learn. Um, and they are overwhelmingly powerful uh, versus characters who don't have special commands. So, like, Grimoth, for example, has all the debate commands, because I went ahead and let him have all the debate commands when he asked for them. I would never want to get in a debate with Grimoth's avatar. He would crush me. Even with Shoyu having a couple of attack commands. There's one attack command which re re reverses any attack command thrown at it. It's basically the only thing that you can use against somebody who has advanced attack commands, because there's an attack command which greatly uh, moves the, the bar towards the opponent and also prevents the opponent from acting from two turns and if if you play that the only way you can possibly use is if somebody has the the uh the command in their deck that reverses it against you they have like a, a mirror card kind of thing and that's the only way if the computer uses that against you you cannot possibly win unless you reverse it against them in which case you pretty much automatically win it's 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 a win button for the debate game Lastly, I should discuss auto commands such as plead. Auto commands produce an effect merely by being possessed. Allow me to demonstrate by choosing the command. No matter what you do, you cannot deny your fate. The fate, but what we make. I just said that. Hmm, I guess you're not totally wrong. When you hold an auto command like so. It completely blocks your opponent's attack commands. Though ineffective against basic commands, auto commands are worth holding as defense against attack commands. Because, yeah, plead basically will just cancel out an attack command. But there's another one, I think it's called refute, which makes the effect of the opponent's attack command hit the opponent. Of course, your opponent may also possess auto commands. In which case, remember that your attack commands will be blocked. Auto commands also have a special effect when actually executed. This time, select the auto command. A true adult is one who never loses the innocence of a baby's heart. I must admit the truth of at least some of your words. Auto commands don't move the intellect meter, nor are they placed on the board. But if your opponent possesses any auto commands, you can destroy all their auto commands in this way. To ensure the success of your own attack commands, a good strategy is to first destroy your opponent's auto commands. 
you can guess which commands your opponent has by their color. Logic, Profit, and Virtue are red, green, and sorry, green, blue, and red, respectively. Auxiliary commands are are white or black, and attack commands are yellow. Other commands, such as auto commands, are purple. If you wish to erase your opponent's auto commands by using your own auto command, it is vital always to select your own command while guessing your opponent's. This ends my introduction to basic auxiliary auto and attack commands. There's only four more hours of this tutorial remaining. However, there are in fact additional commands. Think changes all your commands you currently possess. Meyer changes the position of commands on the board. Though these commands do not move the intellect meter, they can alter the course of debate so you use them wisely. As for auxiliary attack and auto commands, you may acquire more powerful commands as you progress through the game. Always try your hardest and screw up. This ends your instruction in the art of the debate. I sincerely hope fortune favors you and brings you many fine victories. Thank you. She is an officer of way, so she should totally be supporting us. Now let's try to defeat the Nomad in a debate. See, Charisma does enter into it somehow, but I don't know exactly what it does. So are you truly ready? This is your last chance to back out. What, oh come on, can't we have a fight instead? Or do we? <clears throat> now you notice that we don't start at the halfway point. For some reason, when you get into debates with city guards or with brigands, you start out almost defeated. Let's go ahead and use awe. That slightly that suppresses your opponent's intellect slightly each turn. I love this one, and I'll show you how it works in a second. Oh, except he played something with a four value, so we won't get to see it at all. Learn the mistakes of the past and save yourself for the future. Huh? Praise to the heavens and virtue towards men, such as courtesy. Well, is that really true? Try R again. I hope he doesn't have a green three. Oh, I've already left me. What else do I have to lose? I see. I guess you could look at it that way, too. <laughs> now I've got R. This is kind of cool. It means that uh, I will move the bar a little closer to him at the beginning of every turn. Don't think only of yourself. Consider what is good for the land. Oh. Yeah, okay. I didn't read that, so... Surely you understand that true living does not require gold. Huh? Don't you think you'd be better off giving up and apologizing? It seems like I'm at a disadvantage. Charisma must affect how far you move the uh, intellect meter each turn. Anyway, we're both really out of good commands, so that's good to think. Let him push the thing back a little bit, that's fine. Knowing when to regroup is important as well. Didn't really get any good commands out of it, though. I've got a lot of ways I could screw myself over. Governance is advanced through desire. What do you desire? I want your gold. I screwed up. Yeah, he he changed the board around and apparently he had like three different red ellipses appeared for him, so that kind of sucked. I'm so sharp, I'm afraid I might hurt someone. I'm so vain, I probably think this song is about me. Oh, he is famous for Risen by 2. He is famous for having taken a really long time to win a debate with a nomad. Enter Juan. Yeah, let's enter Juan. But I'll tell you what, let's enter Juan in the next video. Yeah, so we're going to have a two-video break where I just show you um, tutorials. And I apologize, but I can't get them to work in Joe Yu's story. So we're going to go ahead and play around with Sal P. Sal P will show us a couple of tutorials, then bow out, and we will return to Joe Yu's story. 
even though Joe Yu's story has not gotten off to a great start because the Chaos Sisters are already wandering off and not joining me like I wanted them to. But uh, we're going to try to recover from that, but not till after we've seen a couple more tutorials with Sao P. This has been Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. And uh, I hope you'll tune in next time. Bye-bye.